This video is really for the people applying for a PGY-1 pharmacy residency this fall. In this video, I'll provide you with all the tips you need to succeed in the application process, interview, and also increase your chances of matching with your desired program. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Eric. I completed a PGY-1 pharmacy residency, a PGY-2 pharmacy residency in oncology, and I obtained my board certification in oncology. I'm currently the assistant director of pharmacy at my institution and also the program director of our PGY-2 oncology pharmacy residency program. I'm in my fifth year of my pharmacy career and I've had the opportunity to interview plenty of students for PGY-1 residency and also interviewed a lot of PGY-1s who are applying for a PGY-2. So yes, I know exactly the ins and outs of this and the important things to focus on to make you stand out. So please hit the like button if you're excited for this. Okay, without further ado, let's begin. I'll be focusing on the three main steps in the process, and I'll provide tips for each step. So first, selecting a residency program, sending in the application, and lastly, going for interviews. Is this residency program local or out of state? So can you commute there daily or you would have to move out of state? As you know, residents do not receive pharmacist salary. You have to take a pay cut. So if you're still staying at home with parents and let's say you don't really pay bills, then you could actually save up more money pursuing a local residency. This can also potentially allow you to start paying majority of your loans off as needed. But of course, if that residency site has all that you need and it's within your means financially, then you should absolutely go out of state. One of the important things to consider when selecting a residency is the rotations that are offered. Sites that have a diverse group of rotations will provide you with training so you could manage different types of patients and different specialties. This will also allow you to get an idea of which specialty you're more interested in and want to specialize in, just in case you want to do a PGY-2 after. Next, salary is something that can make or break your decision to pursue a residency at a specific institution. Some residencies pay about 40000 a year. For some of us, we have a lot of financial responsibilities, plus our loans on top of that. So if you know the finances will impact you, then consider looking for programs that offer more. Some programs offer up to 60000 per year for PGY-1 residents. Okay, here's a fact. No matter how prestigious a residency program is, if the staff is not outgoing, friendly, and down to earth, but instead very uptight, then you may become miserable. This information is something you won't know unless you speak with past residents or you go to the site for a rotation as a student. You want a pharmacy atmosphere where everyone is like a family. Staff greet each other and smile. Staff always willing to help each other. They celebrate birthdays or they hang out outside of work. You will have long exhausting days as a resident and having fun outgoing colleagues that can help you get through the days is very important. So you know which residencies you want to apply to. Now it's time to send in the applications. There are two documents you must focus on. First is the letter of intent. Assuming you have a competitive GPA and your CV and your recommendation letters are above average, the letter of intent will determine whether or not you will get an interview. I have a video on this and I'll include the link above. But some important tips I can give now. Make sure the letter of intent is institution specific. Do not write a general letter of intent and send it to multiple institutions. And this tells me you don't know much about our institution and you didn't do your research on it. So why should we consider you for a residency? It must be concise and easy to follow. Each paragraph should literally have an objective that needs to be addressed. And I explain all of this in the video, so make sure you check it out. Next is the CV. Anything you put on your CV is fair game during interviews, so just make sure it's updated and it matches what you tell the interviewers in person. If any information from the CV is also in your letter of intent, please make sure that matches as well. So you applied to the residency and now you get an interview. By far the most important part of this whole process. I have a video on this as well. Link should be above, but I will provide some tips here. First, practice, practice, practice. Google some questions for PGY-1 pharmacy residencies and practice your answers to them in the mirror. This will put you in the groove and warm you up for the big day. How you answer these questions does matter. For some residency interviews, you must prepare and present a topic. Now pick topics that actually stand out, not the traditional cliche topics like heart failure. Get creative. Even if it's a non-clinical topic, such as the role of the transitions of care pharmacist or the implementation of USB 800, I guarantee you this will help you become memorable. So take some time and brainstorm some interesting topics. Next, come prepared with questions about the program. Bring a notepad with this information and you can add to it or remove as needed during the interview based on the information you receive. That will be all folks. I've covered the important things that you need to know for your residency process. Master these things and I guarantee you that your chances of matching with your desired residency will triple. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave comments down below. Also follow me on my social media platforms. 
Thank you.